Ooh. Ooh. Mustache. Chuck. Hi, bro. Check a little sweaty check, ladies and gentlemen. Sound Mike back with another video. Before we get into it, we're gonna be talking about variations, when to use them, how to use them, maybe when to apply, how to apply yourself to get stronger, squat, bench, dead, overhead, almost any exercise. These general rules outline some description. Rather than the answer, it depends. Coming at you right now, give this thing a thumbs up. Sorry, I'm out of breath. I just did a little superset, set of five squats, set of five bench. 275, 315, respectively. We're back in this, probably live right now. Twitch.tv slash SilentMichael2Ks if you like video games, if you like some entertainment, if you like community, if you like me, if you like you, if you like peanut butter, if you like water, vegetables, pizza, sushi, hamburgers, head over to Twitch.tv slash SilentMichael2Ks. I'm going live every Monday through Thursday, some Fridays, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Love to hang out with you. You'll love to chat. It's my best way to build community, to communicate with y'all, um, and I think, honestly, my best form of entertainment value. Um, diving into that. So we're creating content left and right. Some of you guys might not even know about. Um, KaizenTraining.com, where I do all my coaching with Omar Isaf, we do a blog. So I've been writing a bunch of articles and although I'm a decent writer, I haven't done it from like age 20 to 25 since I dropped out of college. But recently I've dug in a bunch and we get more specific and more organized with my thoughts. YouTube I use to share my journey experiences and teach you guys but it's all off the top of the cuff. I've never done two takes. I've never edited me saying, and um, fug. I've never done any of that. I have general notes on my head, or sometimes I have notes on my phone, but they're bullet points. I've never scripted this thing, because I think what we've lost, the beauty of YouTube, why I actually may prefer Twitch, is that the authenticity, the organic, and I'm not talking about your Fuji apples, is lost through editing and through production. Now I understand industries change and everything must elevate higher production content. Um, and you guys maybe want more detailed content on YouTube, but you guys know what you get here. You know who I am. That's not who I am. Um, but go to the Kaizen training blog or whatever. I'm not saying you have to go there, but that's kind of where I get my detailed ideas out. Spend a couple hours a week typing out. Um, this week we talked about bench variations. Um, when to use them, why to use them, my favorite bench variation, and kind of how to apply those. So I figured I'll give you a condensed version here. If you want the real one, you can head over there. Um, and then if you go to you know Twitch, we'll just BS about music, rap music, basketball, sneakers, and how good I am at Call of Duty. But basically what we're talking about is how I think people use variations or lack thereof. There's kind of two groups, right? There's still the group that varies their exercise trying to get muscle confusion, which literally isn't a thing. Uh, and then there's one group that it's slowly changing, but there was a group that was uber specific. And they're all about specificity, right? Being specific to your goal. If your goal is powerlifting, the squat bench deadlift have to be number one. And all they do is one rep max squat bench deadlift, right? Or handle those type of movements. Now when it comes to programming, depending on the frequency of the lift, squat bench or deadlift, doesn't really matter which lift we're talking about, it's gonna be very difficult to continue progress, not only as you get stronger, more uh, age experience under the barbell, but doing the same lift, the same rep schemes week in and week out. Even if we have three squat days, and one day is doubles, one day is fives, and one day is eights, eventually we're gonna run out of gas. You're gonna end up doing 12 sets of eight, 12 sets of two, 12 sets of five, and making no progress, right? We wanna do least amount of stimulus, least amount of work with the optimal progress. If I can do one set of 10 and make the same progress that you're doing with 10 sets of 10, I'm winning. Because as soon as I plateau, I can now do two sets of 10 and slowly make that progress, right? Where I'm getting at is if we have those squat days or bench days um, that are three times a week, Oftentimes, depending on how far we are from a competition or a test, we'll throw in multiple variations, meaning something that's close to the lift that we're doing, but not the exact same lift. The most basic example is if you're a conventional puller, there's a block pull, there's a sumo pull. If you're a wide grip bencher, we have a close grip bench, we have bench against chains, the list goes on. You guys probably know a lot of them. Um, we can get into them if you'd like, but no need to go into those uh, millions of variations that are possible. Now talking about they make that progress, whether it be with RPE percentage, it really just doesn't matter. We always wanna be able to save ourselves a little bit of room above. Or if you work with a coach or a program, you very, um, it's very unlikely that you've seen RPE 10 on a lot of the big barbell movements. That's because simply um, that stimulus isn't needed for strength. Potential poor technique goes down the drain as soon as we're trying to max out. Higher potential to failure, right? Because we're taking a guess at what we might be able to lift that day. 
recovery time changes as soon as you get a very big compound movement, a lot of weight, and you're going to actual failure. Um, and then beyond that, we want to be able to progress week to week, whether that be sets, reps, or poundage. So you always want to kind of keep some in the tank. That's why a lot of these programs will handle RPE 7s, 8s, and 9s. Same thing as if you do percentage, depending on if you work with a coach or not, that coach would hopefully take you half a step back so that you can continue to make progress. Now again, if we're only doing the competition lift two, three, four times a week, making those progressive strides is gonna be much more difficult once you're two, three, four years into this game. Maybe in your first year, you might be able to get away with some of that. That's when the variations come in. So we're gonna use these variations for multiple things. One, we're gonna use it as um, you know, a mini acute deload, in my opinion. I call it an underload. Some people may call it like a self um, limiting exercise, right? So if you're a wide grip bencher, you kind of arch a little bit. Doing a close grip with a flat back, you'll be able to handle less weight. Now, it, the RPE could still be high. You could still handle a seven, eight, or nine on that, but the overall stimulus to your body, to your muscles, to your um, system will be less because you might be able to handle 225 for sets at three there. Whereas if you went full comp grip, you might be able to do 275, 315, 365, depending on how efficient you are at technique. So we might throw that into the ripple if we're benching three times a week. It'll allow you to kind of keep that progress back. You'll be a little bit fresher for your comp days and you can slowly progress in that. So if you're doing three sets of five with that flat back close grip, then 235, then 245, chances are we can slowly elevate not only our musculature, build more muscle, but build more strength in different positions as we build. Again, the further out from a meet, maybe we have two close grip days and one comp day. Closer to a meet, these are all wild examples and just random, but you have two or three comp benches and one close grip right? The more specific, the more practice with the movement we want and need. A couple other reasons to maybe throw in variations, um, getting in positions um, if you're kind of beat up or have some pain or injury, right? So maybe a full range of motion deadlifts hurting uh, for whatever reason, your knee, your back, I don't really care at this point, your trap, um, whether it be acute or long term. What we can start to do is use variations, cutting down the range of motion or the overall load we'll use, and that'll allow us to handle, um, still train the type of movement pattern, a hip hinge, um, without feeling uh, as bad of pain and still making some progress while maintaining muscle and strength. Uh, the third reason, which I think gets overblown by most people because everyone uses these words, transfer and carry over, which uh, I think lead you to have a misconception of what the exercise are doing, but there is like weak point training. Um, and again, I don't really like those terms because I think you automatically think, um, oh, my triceps are weak because I locked my bench out wrong. And so I'm gonna do close grip for a year and all of a sudden I'm gonna hit 500 pounds on the bench. It doesn't quite work that way. Um, but building some strength in some range of motions or in muscles with a variation of the main lift may benefit you long term. So I like to use them to self limit. Um, kind of how you're training. That's why I don't talk about deloads a ton. We can talk about that in another video and how I use them in programming or my own training. But I kind of have those self-limiting days, those underload exercises or variations. I'm still getting really good work in. Example today, I did a high bar squat, no sleeves, no belt, right? So although I got good work in the intensity side, I'm still building some muscle in my quads. I'm still getting a motor pattern of a squat. I only handled 315 for fives. Whereas if I belt up, maybe I handle 365. If I sleeve up, maybe I'm handling 405. If I go low bar, belt, sleeves, competition stance, maybe I'm handling 455 to 500 plus, right? So there's ways to get good work in, build a motor pattern, build the strength, and build a muscle while still choosing a different variation that doesn't beat us up over time. Now there's a million variations we can do when we're talking bands, chains, range of motion, stances, grips, um, and some of those are to be explored, but another big tip is that we need to give us time, ourselves time to progress in those. So don't just choose a variation for a day, a week, choose it for months or blocks. I like to throw these in for four, six, eight, 12 week blocks as one of the variation days to really make progress and get better at the movement. We're training to get better at a skill to get muscle and those things don't happen in three reps or one session. No, I know that might seem like a ton of info thrown at you. I'm just kind of covering variations and why I use them, how I use them, and some slight examples on when, why, and for whom. Um, but hopefully you take away, leave some comments below, more specific if you want, I'll cover them in an upcoming video. I appreciate you guys so much with this poor new video. Every Monday, Wednesday, thanks so much fam. I'll see you on Twitch. Catch you in the next video, Salam Agamal.